By way of introduction, his sister Anna and I trained together at Theological College and I was in fact Anna's buddy or godmother or whatever they oh, call yeah. it when she first arrived. That's yes. right, yeah. So Leah, I've said that you are a medieval harpist That's and you're correct. a pilgrim. Yes. Some people here have met you already because mm -hmm. in August 2021 you uh, came and stayed at the rectory as part of a walking pilgrimage to Walsingham. That's right, yeah. Would you like to say something about, about what all that was about? Yeah. And is about. <laughs> so I was called to pilgrimage, if you like, in 2012. And the first pilgrimage that I made was the famous one to Santiago de Compostela in Galicia in northern Spain. And since then I've completed several more, including walking to Canterbury, which I know that you've done. Uh, that was back in 2013. 2020 and 2021 were difficult for all of us, weren't they? Mm -hmm. As a musician, I was used to traveling around a lot and doing concerts all over Europe. And when the lockdown happened, I had a whole load of concerts that just, that all stopped. And at first that was sort of, it was all a bit exciting. You know, maybe some of you were a bit afraid, I was a bit afraid, but a bit excited. It was all very new, but we were all coming together, weren't we, to, you know, face this new challenge. But as it dragged on, things got more difficult to deal with and I started to realise that I wasn't as happy as I might like to be. I do suffer from recurrent depression and one of the ways in which I help myself is to go on pilgrimages. Now there's lots of reasons why a pilgrimage is good for your mental health. One of them is simply the fact of physical activity. Another one is being out there in nature. I commune with dragonflies and snails and sheep. Um, so Francis would have a lot to say about that. Yeah. Yes. Well, I was born on the 4th of October. Oh, well. Mm. <laughs> St Francis is dead. So I decided, you know, I'm feeling down. I'd like to do something and I would like to go on a pilgrimage. And I decided to go on a pilgrimage to Norwich and then on to Walsingham. To Norwich because I'm very interested in English mysticism and Julian of Norwich whose wonderful revelations of divine love I've read and which gives a lot of comfort. All shall be well, as she said, all shall be well. So I decided that would be an excellent goal. It took me about three months to plan it because I, I was going to make it a way in which I affirmed my Christian faith by coming to people like Elizabeth here and asking for their help in order to complete my pilgrimage. So I stayed in several churches and with several other vicars on the way. It took me just over three weeks to get there. Uh, it was quite a challenge. Um, I'm not particularly fit. You know, it's not as if I go running every day or anything, which you do. You, I mean, you yeah, be good not, at... Yeah, not, but not the marathon like the <laughs> people are up to this morning. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Quite. Um, so physically it's quite a challenge and at the end of every day I have a great sense of achievement which is also a great way to combat my inner demons and it was also a wonderful way to affirm myself as a Christian. Hmm. Does that give you, Thank a, you. That's, a little that's picture very of why I do pilgrimages? That's very helpful. I want to ask you some more questions. Please. So I visited Santiago de Compostela when I was 13 in a luxury air-conditioned coach. Mm. And I watched as people were on their bikes and were walking by the road and I was thinking, am I a pilgrim? Are they real pilgrims? I'm thinking about mm. the road to Emmaus. Mm. What is a pilgrimage? And I've said to you, you're very welcome. We have a tradition that our young people ask the most difficult questions of the congregation <laughs> of me. Feel free to throw the questions back at me if <laughs> no they get problem. too difficult. <laughs> what is a pilgrimage? Funnily enough, I was talking about that yesterday. On Friday night, I gave my concert about Marjorie Kemp in Leicester. 
and I was staying with some very good friends of mine, friends of my sister Anna as well, and they are not Christians, they are atheists. And they were interested in finding out what a pilgrimage is as well. And so I needed to find words that could explain what it is, because I, I strongly believe that anyone can make a journey into a pilgrimage, even if it's as simple as walking around your garden. Because it's about an intention, it's about seeking, whatever it might be that you're seeking. So you might be seeking, for me, a stronger connection to God, or you might be seeking to know more about yourself, which, in, you know, if that's the way in which you discover something more, and I would say that's also a way of seeking God, but an atheist wouldn't see it like that. Um, but seeking to understand more, it's a way to connect with something bigger. For some people, that might be nature. Um, but the intention of being quiet and allowing God to speak to you is what makes a journey a pilgrimage. And in terms of the road to maze, because I was reading it this morning thinking, how does this relate to pilgrimage? Maybe it's to do with exactly that, with listening. Mm. And what gets discovered? Maybe the pilgrimage is as much in the discovery of Jesus as it is in the in the travelling. Absolutely. And I'm actually wondering, thinking, you know, some of us are able to, to walk and Absolutely. they say, Sol what is it, the Latin solvitor ambulando, the solution is in the walking. And yeah. for me, I think there's, there's a lot in that, but some of us aren't able to do that. Absolutely. Can we make a pilgrimage, not physically moving at all, but spiritually I journeying would. or in, in recognising we're not able to move? Absolutely. Mm. Because I think if you give yourself the space in your imagination to go on an inner journey, that's, you know, it's about the seeking, it's about listening, it's about discovery. Mm. Um, it can be a meditative exercise as well as a physical one, mm. definitely. So we are in six months of focus on prayer and pilgrimage, which is okay. partly about slowing down, it's about listening to God, it's about yeah. um, trying to listen to where God might be calling St Mary's and where we should be focusing. Um, as we focused on prayer, we asked lots of questions and our young people in particular encouraged us to ask some questions. And one thing that kept coming up is, can you pray wrong? Can you do pilgrimage wrong? Is there a... Do we need to be scared or should we just? Well, you definitely don't need to be scared. A lot of people express a concern for me when they realise that I'm going on a pilgrimage on my own. Mm. Um, and I feel as if God is my shield as a pilgrim, basically. Mm. Mm. So we don't need any fear. We can try to let go of fear. For some people that's also hard to let go of that sensation and that's okay god will meet you whether you're afraid or not um i don't think i don't think you can do pilgrimage wrong i think there's a lot of people who might tell you certainly i remember an occasion when i arrived in a, a very small village in the middle of spain i can't even remember what it was called and i was the only pilgrim who was going to stay in that particular hostel uh, that evening I was quite early in the season I set off in March and walked through March and April so it was not very unusual that I was the only person and the the woman who greeted me it was an amazing place actually they had a kind of a museum of memorabilia about the pilgrimage and that was very beautiful and you feel a really big connection to all of these symbols because you feel like you belong with all of with all of this, you're a part of that massive ongoing story that is still carrying on and has been going on for thousands of years. So all of these symbols and everything. And she, so she and her husband were obviously very deeply engaged with the pilgrimage and very welcoming and very warm. I remember they provided fantastic food. Very important. You get very hungry when you're walking so far every day. But I do remember she had some rather strange ideas about how to be a pilgrim. 
Um, also, some helpful ideas. I have problems with bed bugs. Bad books. Bed. Bed bugs. Books. Oh. oh. Yeah, sorry, my, my Lancashire accent. No, no, no. Do you need a bit of translation? <laughs> if you need translation, just wave and, and Elizabeth will help. Bed bugs, which is an ongoing problem actually, and has been for a long time on the trip to Santiago. And she gave me some tips about how to avoid getting them again. But she also told me that the best way to stay dry was to carry an umbrella. And why did I not have an umbrella? I just thought that was the most insane idea because it's so windy there's just no way that you could keep an umbrella <laughs> so it, and she had really really sort of strict ideas and she wasn't very happy about the idea that you know you had to eat a particular kind of breakfast and and I, you know you did come across people know my I met my husband my French husband on on the first pilgrimage that I did to Santiago and he told me all sorts of stories about the weird things that people had told him that he should do, and, and the, oh no, don't do that, that's, that's incorrect. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm all about just em embracing what happens yeah. in the pilgrimage. Um, I won't, well, I will embarrass him. My husband is at the back, and um, <laughs> we did some practice walks for the pilgrimage from Guildford to Canterbury, where mm. in fact he met my parents for the first time. And I was on this walk, I was sort of stuck up a bank, mm. and I, I realised that I needed some help. Mm. And he was the nearest person. So the first time we held hands was he was helping me down from this bank. You see, oh. I, I really did need some help. Yeah. Honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are so many things that I have learned or embraced that I just wouldn't have done otherwise through yeah. through pilgrimage. Um, I'm trying to think of a, a simple example. Um, and my perspective has been changed. Mm. Um, I can remember walking from London to Canterbury in four days once. <laughs> It was a Sunday morning, we'd, so we'd already done 40 miles, and it was <gasps> tipping it down with rain. I was soaked to the skin. Yeah. Uh, my walking boots that had been all right the first couple of days, I realized I didn't have an insole in them. So my feet were literally bleeding. There were so many blisters all over them. Mm. And I was trying really hard not to cry and not really quite managing it. Oh. And then I said to a couple of people, I think I need some help. I want to keep going, but I think I need some help. And the minute I said, I think I need some help, they said, well, of course, what do you need? And within five minutes, they had, with their pen knives, they had cut a stick for me from each side. And I tell you, those two sticks, Amazing. my feet still hurt, but I had something to lean on. But more than that, I knew that I wasn't on my own and yeah. that I had help. Yeah. And whether that's oh, practical right. help or whether that's help from God, whether that's recognising that we need some more help. Yeah. And I did that walk. Yeah. And I finished it. Amazing. I yeah. bet you felt fantastic <laughs> I did. Afterwards. I did. I did. Another time, I can remember we were on a walk, a pilgrimage, where we were staying in churches every mm. day and sleeping bags and, yeah. you know, the, the yeah. clock ringing on the hour, every yeah. hour. <laughs> we had one night in a bed and breakfast. Luxury. <gasps> we sat around the table in the morning having breakfast with um, some other people who were staying and who were not on pilgrimage. This is near Rochester. Mm. And they said, you know, what are you doing today? And we said, well, we're, we're walking. We've been walking all week. What are you doing? We're going to the zoo in Canterbury. And my head did a flip and I went, but that's 20 miles away. That's, that's, you can't get there and back and go to the zoo. That's at least three days. And I realized that because I'd been walking for four days, my idea about what was normal had completely totally changed. And food, I can remember being on pilgrimage in a coach in Spain. And we had this wonderful routine of non-vegetarians going first because you didn't know what you were going what you were eating <laughs> what do you think it is <laughs> do we need to ask for something else for the vegetarians oh um what have you learned through pilgrimage what have i learned through pilgrimage i've i've learned that i'm much stronger than i thought i was ah. and that sense stays with me for a while but then i need to top up again mm. i think that's why i keep being called mm. back to do more pilgrimages, to remind myself of my own strength and resilience, mm. actually. Uh, what else have I learned? I've learned that I belong. Oh. And that's a very big thing to learn, um, which was life-changing. To have that deep sense of Belonging is a gift that I couldn't have imagined ever receiving. 
So I can imagine recognizing belonging with God, belonging in this world, belonging with creation. Belonging yeah, with all others. of those, literally yeah. all of yeah. that. That I know that there's a place that I can go and it's a physical place as well. It's literally a physical place on the road to Santiago. But it's also an inner place where I can remind myself. It's also a church. It's, it's all of those things. The body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah, and and that, that was such a magical realisation. Do you recognise that as you're on pilgrimage, or do you recognise that later, or is it a bit of both? It's a little bit of both, I mm. think. Um, the process of walking, particularly through Spain, really reinforces it because people recognise you for what you are, and everyone, every pilgrim is the same. There's no outward sign. You know, all of you here, look at me and my blue hair, and you make a decision about me already. You look at my clothes. You think this is a medieval harpist. All of these signs, which, you know, fair enough, they are correct signs about something about me. But when I'm on pilgrimage, all of that drops away. And we all become equal. We're all wearing the same kinds of clothes. We've all got the same goals. And that is unbelievably liberating. It really is. I've walked from St. Martin in the Fields in Trafalgar Square to Canterbury several times, and everybody has got shorts, waterproof jacket, and a thing around their neck with their first name on. Yeah. And you literally do not know whether that person is street homeless, is the CEO of somewhere. Exactly. And it happened to me. The vicar of St. Martin in the Fields came over to me and said, hi, I'm Sam. I said, hi, I'm Elizabeth. And then in a little voice, he said, I'm the vicar here. And I was like, yeah, of course you are. But my first you, impression yeah, was a fellow Sam. pilgrim. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So how does your music fit into all of this? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Basically, it didn't to start off with. I, you know, I am interested in medieval history and doing the pilgrimage felt like a piece of living history. You know, people often ask me, oh, do you carry your harp with you? It's like, no, you, every gram counts, you know, and at X, I, use, I cut off half of my toothbrush to save those extra grams. So there's no way you're carrying an instrument. That's just crazy talk. Basically, my current artistic project, which is all about Marjorie Kemp, the 15th century pilgrim. Mystic. Yes. And mystic and visionary. And the first person to write an autobiography in English. This is a way that I bring my pilgrimage self together with my musician self. And a mystic? What's a mystic? What's a mystic? Marjorie Kemp had visions and she heard Jesus and other saints speaking to her. And these voices gave her reassurance, gave her love, and guided her throughout her life. At the same time, she was often very concerned to talk to others to make sure that she wasn't being misled. So she would seek reassurance that these were the voices of God. Julian of Norwich encouraged her, as did various archbishops. Um, so that is the way in which she was a mystic. Julian of Norwich was a mystic who had several visions of Christ being crucified, which equally brought to her a great sense of the love of God. Does that answer, Thank do you, you think? It does, it does. So there's a sense in which all of life is a pilgrimage and having a specific time or a specific journey may help us to focus on the ways in which that's a lovely oh, way that's yeah. a lovely way of thinking about it yeah definitely hmm. 
In what ways do you think your life is like a pilgrimage? Have you had, I don't know, waypoints? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sometimes people say to me, um, when were you converted to Christ? And I say, well, I can point to that moment and that moment and that moment. Mm. And that moment, and it's 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 markers. Yeah, like way. pearls on a yeah, necklace. Yeah, I keep needing to be converted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Yeah. Actually, we have to revisit this um, and make those inner journeys or outer journeys again and again. Mm. Leah, thank you so much. Thank um, you. It's really good to share with you about pilgrimage. Yeah, we'll need to move on to the next bit of this pilgrimage of this service but you're going to be playing for us at the end and That's I'll right. say more later on because you're with us all day yeah there are more lovely, lovely opportunities to, to share in you with, with you in, in your pilgrimage thank you I wish you every blessing and grace you. for your thank onward you. pilgrimage everybody thank you. thank you so much <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Let us, if we are able, stand to declare together the faith of the church in the words of the Creed. I believe 